We'll update the business of vaccines. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. And by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, committed to thriving children, working families, and equitable communities. Learn more at WKKF.org. I'm David Brancaccio. Just days after Pfizer said its COVID vaccination was more than 90% effective, another firm, Moderna, says it's moving to a new phase of testing for its vaccine. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall-Genzer is with us with the news. Well, David, you have to have a certain number of infections before you can determine if a vaccine is effective. In Moderna's vaccine trial, half of the 30,000 participants got the vaccine. The other half got a placebo. Moderna says around 50 of the volunteers have now gotten COVID-19. So now it will analyze how many of them received the vaccine versus the placebo. And what kind of vaccine is this one? It's the same kind Pfizer's making. They're not like a typical vaccine, which involves injecting inactivated virus into a patient. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines use messenger RNA. The vaccine prompts the body to produce COVID-19's spike protein. The idea is a person's immune system then learns to attack and destroy it. So apparent progress, but distribution of the result would be a big hurdle here. It could be a challenge, uh, at least in developing countries. These vaccines need to be kept very cold, below freezing. That's not a problem in the U.S., but could be difficult in other nations. And Moderna has already agreed to supply 100 million doses to the U.S. Nancy, thank you. The S&P future is now down a tenth percent. The Nasdaq future up half a percent. Consumers in China spent more than $100 billion online during the country's largest e-commerce sales splurge called Singles Day, which this year ran from the first of the month until yesterday. Here's Marketplace's China correspondent Jennifer Pack. The Singles Day shopping event is bigger than online sales in the U.S. during Black Friday, Thanksgiving and Cyber Monday combined. In terms of imported goods, the U.S. was the top seller to China. But don't get your hopes up just yet, American brands. Yes, online sales have been increasing the first nine months of the year by nearly 10 percent compared to the same period in 2019. But overall, retail sales from January to September is still down 7.2 percent because of the pandemic. The newly unemployed because of the pandemic have not had any government cash handouts. China has a very weak social safety net. Families here have to save a lot for housing, children's education, health care, and retirement. In Shanghai, I'm Jennifer Pack for Marketplace. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Blackline, presenting Beyond the Black, a virtual event dedicated to modern accounting and open to all CFOs, controllers, and finance and accounting professionals. Over 50 CPE eligible sessions, November 17th to 19th, blackline.com. And by Fidelity Wealth Management, where advisors work with their clients to develop flexible investment strategies that evolve as their needs change. Fidelity.com slash wealth. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. And by GEP. GEP helps businesses build resilient supply chains with strategies, services, and cloud-native software, including GEP Smart and GEP Next, AI-based digital procurement and supply chain platforms. Is this the moment to refine investment portfolios for those lucky enough to have them? Let's ask Barry Ritholtz, Chairman and Chief Investment Officer at Ritholtz Wealth Management. Barry, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Let's talk here to real people, not you big dogs with your fancy portfolios. Maybe someone's got some retirement money in the markets, maybe another nest egg. President-elect Biden, does that headline in itself mean it's time to make some adjustments? So let me throw that question back at you in a different way. I mean, with the exception of President Hoover, because we know what's going to happen with the 29 crash and the Great Depression, it's hard to see how electing any president makes a difference to people's long-term portfolios. One of my favorite things to do is to show people a chart of employment, of wages, of GDP, of retail sales, going from 2010 to 2020 with the dates stripped out of the bottom and say to people, show me where the Obama presidency ended when the Trump presidency begins. 
you can't do it. It looks like the exact same path. Mm. It's interesting. And I suppose underscoring your point is that at the moment, it looks like the U.S. Senate will be controlled by a different party from the White House. And that would suggest that radical new changes in policy may not be happening. One of the things I think people forget, Biden is this centrist, deal-making, cross-the-aisle, old-school politician. He wants an infrastructure plan. He wants to rebalance some of the Trump tax cuts. Let's, let's think about it this way. When are the best times to make the sort of changes we're discussing. And and usually it's when you are objective and you are incorporating major life events, people get married or they have kids or some other events creates a future financial liability, but no one should be making wholesale changes in their portfolio based on which candidate won. The exception being if you're one of those people that are fortunate enough to have $24 million, well, then you have some planning to do if Biden manages to change some of the uh, tax rules. But I do appreciate your narrow casting to the um, subset of our audience who have the $24 million that they have to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got, like three? <laughs> I don't know what the statistics are. Barry Ritholtz, he's the chairman and chief investment officer at Ritholtz Wealth Management. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And are President Trump and his allies misleading small donors when they solicit money to fight the election results? The pitch is about stopping the left from trying to, quote, steal the election, an assertion without evidence. But another issue is that donations of less than $8,000 will not necessarily go to fighting the results, but to a Trump political action committee or the Republican National Committee. Now, that is disclosed in the fine print. Reuters quotes a Republican political strategist saying the grassroots pitch is misleading. I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media. Support for WNY.